G'day Throttlers and welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I talk about my top 10 things that I just can't ride without. G'day, I'm Rob Charlwood and I'm passionate about everything with a throttle. Join me as I explore all things motorcycles, lifestyle cars, and of course, the best destinations for riding, driving, and my absolutely favorite thing to do, eating. Follow my journey by hitting subscribe, and if you'd like to support the channel, head over to throttledownunder.com and grab some merch. I know that it's no secret to many of you, but I need a good coffee to start my day off. Whether it's from my espresso machine, whether it's going to a local cafe for a barista made coffee, or whether it's having one on the road as well. So my first essential of my top 10 is caffeine, but it's gotta be good. None of this instant rubbish. Now, the challenge is, that when you're on the road a lot, and sometimes you're traveling from town to town, hours in between here in Australia, is there's not always a good coffee shop nearby. If you're camping in the bush, there's no coffee shops nearby. So, I've got a really cool solution. A fellow moto vlogger here in Australia called Michael Munro, uh, known as the Moto Barista on YouTube, he started up his own coffee company, and I'm excited to show you Wild Child, coffee sachets. Now the best thing about these is that you could pack these in your backpack, on your bike, and as long as you've got a hot water source or a little kettle to boil, you can have high quality coffee on the side of the road and you're not missing out on that morning caffeine fix. Michael has also kindly offered a discount code for you guys, my viewers, to be able to order your own wild child coffee for 15% off. Now when you go to order, in the discount section you put in TDU, throttle down under, TDU15, that's gonna give you 15% off your order. Head over to Wild Child Coffee and put in an order. You're not only supporting an Australian business, but you're supporting another motorcycle enthusiast. He's just recently sold a Harley Davidson and he's got his KTM off-road adventure bike now. He's a great cinematographer, and he's a great coffee maker too. So get on board, Wild Child Coffee, TDU 15, gives you 15% off. Now number two item that I can't ride without are these Scram glasses. Now Scram is an Australian company, Australian made glasses that are transitional lenses. So these are made with a polycarbonate lens that's unbreakable. On their website, you can see them bending and stretching these into the most amazing shapes and they just bounce back, they don't break. Um, but the very cool thing is, number one, you can get these as a prescription lens, which mine are, or you can get them as a clear lens, no problems at all. Now these are a transition lens, so I can leave here at dark in the morning, put these on, riding up the road, as the sun's rising and the UV increases, then these transition into a pair of sunglasses. I don't need to change glasses. I don't need to be pulling over and changing. They just transition into sunglasses. And then when it gets later and darker, at the end of the day, again, they go back clear again and I can still wear them safely. So these are highly recommended. Scram are an awesome Australian company and I just can't recommend them enough. All right, the third item that I need to ride with, and not so much on every ride, but if I'm doing a long highway ride where I'm doing 120, 130 kilometers an hour for a period of an hour or more, owning my bike, a Harley Davidson with modified exhaust, it can be droney and echoey through your ears. You can get off the bike at the end of a ride and it feels like you've been to an ACDC concert. Your ears are ringing and your hearing is affected and is damaged by the end of the day. So I have a set of earplugs and in particular, I have these custom made earplugs. Now these were made by an audiologist and they, they were molded specifically to my ear. So I can put them in, they seal up almost all of the sound and uh, just leaving, you can hear ambient sound still. So you can hear traffic, you can hear oncoming cars, you can hear the essential things, but most importantly, it drowns out that decibel of your exhaust just thrumming away, destroying your eardrums. So this is highly recommended. You don't have to spend a lot of money for custom ones like I have. You can buy some generic ones at the shop. Uh, 
if you're going to do it, spend the money, get some custom ones made, highly recommend it. Now number four is the quad lock on my bike. Now the quad lock is seriously the best mobile phone holder for motorcycles that I've ever seen. I've never seen a better one. I've never seen a more suitable one. And most importantly, quad lock is also evolving so much over time. Uh, there, with the modern phones, there has been camera issues. So quad lock have developed a vibration dampener. So your phones are better protected. I've had no problems at all with mine. Uh, my phone and my camera still works perfectly. I'm running a Samsung S20 and had no problems at all. I think some of the iPhone, the newer iPhone models have been having troubles. So that's something to think about. But quad lock is something that I'd never leave home without. And I've always got the quad lock phone case on so I can just click it on and off at any time that I need. Okay, number five is one that's really close to my heart and it's not a physical item that I take with me, but it's part of my plan. There has to be a food destination involved with the ride for me. That's part of the riding experience for me is going somewhere, having a meal, enjoying a different ambience uh, before either continuing on or coming home. Number six is music. Now, music is a controversial topic when it comes to motorcycling. Some people like to have earphones in so they can hear the music inside their helmet or their comms unit. Uh, some people don't like music at all because it affects what they can hear about the world around them. For me, I only like the music when it's coming out of my dashboard on my street glide. Uh, that way it's external music, I can still hear everything around me and I don't have music pumping directly into my ears. Now that's just personal choice, uh, but when it comes to music, it has to be Bob Marley on a highway run. Uh, just listening to Bob Marley grooving along as I'm flying down a, a motorway is one of my favourite things to do. Number seven, I'm in all the gear all the time sort of a fella. I don't ride in t-shirts, I don't ride without gloves. Uh, I always have a helmet, obviously here in Australia we have to wear helmets anyway. But my chosen gloves at the moment are the filthy leather retro gloves. Now these are made in Shell Harbour, south of Sydney, south of Wollongong, but they're such a beautiful soft leather, uh, handmade and local business as well selling these. So I highly recommend Filthy Leather for all of your leather requirements. Uh, give Filthy Phil a bit of a call down there, check out his website. But this is a must do with me. They're comfortable, they're protective, and they look hell cool too. Number eight. Now most motorcyclists have multiple helmets and I'm absolutely no different. I've got an open face helmet from Johnny Reb where I just go down to the shops with only slow local sort of riding. I've got a shark helmet which is full face which is my old moto vlogging helmet. I've had it for a few years now. It's great, I love it. It's got a clear visor, it's got an internal sun visor. Awesome, but it's heavy. Now, I bought this about a year ago and I absolutely fell in love with it. This is the Shoei Glamster helmet. They're retro style that, that Shoei have developed. Now there's no internal visor on this. Uh, however, as you can see, I've put a tinted visor on there. But what I love about this is it's pretty quiet considering it's a retro helmet, but more importantly, it's super light on my head. Super light and comfortable. It is 1665 grams. So, that's super light in my opinion. It's definitely the lightest helmet that I own apart from my open face helmets and uh, and it's absolute ripper. Now the downside to this helmet is I had my Cena comms on this but there's not enough space in the ear area for the speakers to go in for the Cena comms. I've got big ears, maybe that was the problem. Uh, I'm not saying don't get it for that reason. Uh, however, I just decided that I couldn't use my Cena comms in here at all. It was too irritating. Uh, but as you can see, I've got a GoPro mount for moto vlogging on the front. I just wire up a, a lapel mic inside it for when I'm moto vlogging. But my showy Glamster is highly recommended. Great helmet. Number nine, we're almost to the end team. Number nine is cameras. Now obviously, 
being a moto vlogger, cameras are essential for me, but I don't know many motorcyclists at all that don't go out and take photos of their ride on the side of the road or at different locations or with all their other mates' bikes. It seems to be a thing with the advent of social media and all that sort of stuff that people love taking photos of their bikes. So, the two main cameras I have, other than my mobile phone, which is always with us, uh, I have multiple GoPros. Now this GoPro is the Hero 9 and probably my most used GoPro. I've also got a 7 and an 8, uh, which are great, but this has great stabilization, good image quality, and I just really love it. Longer lasting batteries than the 7 and the 8, and I'm yet to buy a 10. I'm not sure that I'll buy a 10 in a hurry, only because this does everything that I need it to do. Now the one thing that the GoPro doesn't do very good is dynamic range. And so I also carry my Canon M50. Now this is one of the smallest digital cameras that you can get with interchangeable lenses. Great little camera and I highly recommend this for beginners and for intermediate people using cameras. Uh, interchangeable lenses allows you to get any sort of effect that you like as well as having great slow-mo, uh, really good image quality. And I've put mine in a small rig case so I can just put different things around it, microphones, lights, uh, whatever I need. So that's why it looks a bit bigger than normal, uh, being the M50 being a small camera. So the Canon M50 is definitely my go-to camera when I'm out on the bike. And last but not least, number 10 essential things that I need to take on a ride. Anytime you get to a location or a destination and you pull your helmet off, the sun's beaming down on you. I'm a baldy, if you haven't noticed, I get burnt within three minutes of being in the sun. So, I never go anywhere without my throttle down under cap. So, they're always in my bags, on the bike, in a backpack. Every one of my cars has a few hats in it, just because you never know when you're gonna get stuck in the weather. And, oh man, I hate getting a sunburnt head. Incidentally, if you want any Throttle Down Under merch at all, t-shirts, caps, stickers, beer coolers, head over to throttledownunder.com and there's a brand new t-shirt that's up for pre-order right now. Super cool image on the back. I'm really excited by this one. It's a limited edition, so make sure you get on board, put your order in for one, two, three, four, however many you want. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video this week. I know it was a bit of a laid back one. Do you know what? Today's Monday, the 11th of October. Do you know what that means? That means today is Freedom Day in New South Wales. We were allowed to get out and ride and travel further than our LGA today, but hey, guess what? It's pissing down with rain out there today and it's cold. So, I was stuck inside, I had to make a video, the lights are on, I'm in the shed, uh, and I thought I'd just bring this to you. But rest assured that tomorrow is a day where I should be able to get out on the bike and make some interesting footage on the road again. It's been so long, I don't even know if I can talk to other humans anymore. Uh, social anxiety from being locked up for three months. I think it's been about three months we've been locked up here in Sydney. Anyway, I truly appreciate everyone that sticks around to the end of the videos. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate everyone that stuck around during the lockdown period where I just haven't been able to review bikes or cars. I haven't been able to go to interesting locations for food. I haven't been able to bring you any cool people at all. Uh, I've just been locked up, like most of New South Wales, in particular Sydney. So thanks for sticking around. Until the next video, folks, throttle on, stay safe. Before you go, check out the video here of Fendog. It was a bit of a highlight reel of an interview that I did a few months ago that went for 43 minutes. This is a nice bite-sized chunk at 10 minutes. Check it out. Please support Fendog. Please share it around as many people as you can because we want to get his message out there. He's making a difference. He's helping people. He's saving lives. Check out Fendog. See you guys.